Imagine standing on the tarmac, feeling the ground tremble beneath your feet as a mechanical roar eclipses all other sounds. This isn't just any aircraft's engine hum, it's the Republic XF-84H, known infamously as the Thunder Screech. Its name is no hyperbole. The XF-84H's propeller blades spun at supersonic speeds, producing a high-pitched whine so intense it could be heard miles away making it arguably the loudest aircraft ever built. The XF-84H stands as a bold testament to the extreme engineering efforts that marked aviation history. Developed in the mid-1950s, this experimental turboprop fighter was a product of ambition and innovation, pushing the boundaries of speed and sound. Its design was a response to a unique challenge, combining the responsiveness of a propeller with the sheer velocity of jet propulsion. The XF-84H aimed to revolutionize air travel, and why, despite its groundbreaking aspirations, it remained tethered to the realm of experimental prototypes. The story of the Thunder Screech is not just about an aircraft, it's about the relentless pursuit of progress and the lessons learned when we reach for the skies. The XF-84H, an aircraft that resonates through history as much for its ear-splitting roar as for its ambitious design, was born out of a strategic necessity and a daring vision. The concept for the XF-84H originated from a US Navy requirement for a carrier-based fighter that could take off without the need for catapult assistance. This need spurred the development of an aircraft that sought to marry the agility and responsiveness of a propeller-driven plane with the high-speed capabilities of jet propulsion. The heart of the XF-84H's propulsion system was the Allison XT-40A1 turboprop engine, a powerhouse that combined two T-38 gas turbine power sections side-by-side, side, driving a common reduction gearbox. This gearbox in turn powered the aircraft's notorious supersonic propeller. The engine specifications were impressive for its time, boasting a 19-stage axial flow compressor in each T-38 gas turbine, delivering a shaft horsepower of 5,332 shp and an additional jet thrust of 1,296 pounds. The overall pressure ratio was 6.3 to 1, with a specific fuel consumption of 0.63 pounds per hph, for the equivalent shaft horsepower reflecting the engine's efficiency. Integrating such a powerful engine into the XF-84H's design was no small feat. The engine was centrally located behind the cockpit, with a long extension shaft leading to the nose-mounted propeller. This placement was crucial for the aircraft's balance and aerodynamics, but presented challenges in terms of vibration and stability. The XF-84H's speed ambitions necessitated a rethinking of conventional aircraft design. One of the most significant aerodynamic enhancements was the adoption of a T-tail configuration. This design choice was instrumental in avoiding the turbulent airflow over the horizontal stabilizer and elevator surfaces, which could be caused by the propeller wash. The T-tail ensured that the control surfaces remained effective even at high speeds, providing the necessary stability and control. The aircraft's wing also received considerable attention. The XF-84H was equipped with a swept-back wing with an aspect ratio of 3.4 5, which was designed to reduce drag at higher speeds. This wing design was a common feature in jet aircraft of the era, which were breaking new ground in speed records. However, integrating this feature into a propeller-driven aircraft presented unique challenges, particularly in managing the airflow and maintaining lift at the lower speeds of takeoff and landing. To counteract the propeller's torque and the P-factor, the XF-84H underwent significant airframe modifications. The propeller's torque, a force that tends to rotate the aircraft in the opposite direction of the propeller spin, was particularly problematic due to the unprecedented power of the XT-40A1 turboprop engine. The P-factor, or asymmetric blade effect, refers to the tendency of an aircraft to yaw to one side due to the descending propeller blade, generating more thrust than the ascending blade, especially at high angles of attack. To mitigate these effects, the XF-84H was fitted with a fixed dorsal yaw vane, which helped to stabilize the aircraft against the torque generated by the propeller. Additionally, various design features were implemented to counteract the massive torque, including mounting the left leading edge intake 12 inches further forward than the right, 
and providing left and right flaps with differential operation. These modifications were crucial in ensuring that the XF84H could maintain a straight flight path without being pulled off course by the forces acting upon it. Material selection for the propeller was critical, as the blades had to withstand the stresses of supersonic operation. Steel was chosen for its strength and durability, but this also contributed to the weight and complexity of the propeller system. Aerodynamic considerations were equally important, with numerous blade configurations tested before settling on the final design. The propeller pitch gearing was a particular point of failure during test flights, and vibration from the drive shafts and the propeller itself plagued the aircraft. The control surfaces of the XF84H were also modified to deal with the high-speed aerodynamic issues. The elevators, ailerons, and rudders were all adjusted to ensure that they could provide the necessary control inputs at the speeds the aircraft was expected to reach. The elevators, in particular, were crucial for maintaining pitch control at supersonic propeller speeds, and their effectiveness was a testament to the ingenuity of the XF84H's designers. The XF84H's design innovations were a bold attempt to push the boundaries of what was possible with propeller-driven aircraft. The T-tail configuration, airframe modifications, and control surface adjustments were all part of a concerted effort to create an aircraft that could operate at speeds previously thought unattainable for such a design. While the XF-84H may not have achieved its ultimate goal of becoming a mainstay in the US Air Force's fleet, its legacy lives on as a symbol of the daring and creativity that defines the spirit of aviation exploration. Breaking the sound barrier is a feat that has long captivated the imagination of engineers and aviators alike. For propeller-driven aircraft like the XF-84H, this challenge was compounded by unique physical and engineering hurdles. The sound barrier, or Mach 1, represents the point at which an aircraft moves from transonic to supersonic speed, a realm fraught with aerodynamic complexities. As a propeller-driven aircraft approaches the speed of sound, it encounters a dramatic increase in aerodynamic drag and shock waves. These shock waves are particularly problematic for propellers as their tips can reach supersonic speeds, even if the rest of the aircraft has not yet broken the sound barrier. This results in decreased efficiency and increased stress on the propeller blades. The XF84H's propeller was designed to operate at these extreme speeds, but the resulting noise and vibrations were severe enough to cause physical discomfort and even incapacitate ground crews and pilots. The aircraft's airframe was a modified version of the F84F Thunderstreak, with several adaptations made to accommodate the unique requirements of the turboprop engine and the supersonic propeller. Among these modifications was the addition of a T-tail to ensure that the horizontal stabilizers remained clear of the turbulent airflow generated by the propeller. The XF84H also featured a distinctive dorsal yaw vane to counteract the propeller's torque and P-factor, which refers to the asymmetric thrust produced by a spinning propeller under certain conditions. Despite the innovative design and the potential to set new records for propeller-driven aircraft, the XF-84H faced numerous challenges. Between July 1955 and October 1956, two XF-84Hs undertook a series of 12 test flights, which were marred by mechanical failures and human challenges. The aircraft's maiden flight, piloted by Hank Baird, was emblematic of the difficulties to come, with 10 out of 11 flights ending in forced landings due to various mechanical malfunctions. The XF-84H's mechanical issues were numerous. The powerful torque from the propeller caused significant destabilization, which, coupled with inherent problems with the supersonic propeller blades, led to many exotic blade configurations being tested before settling on a final design. The aircraft was also plagued by engine-related glitches, which hindered its performance and reliability. These mechanical setbacks were a constant thorn in the side of the program, leading to numerous emergency landings and safety concerns. The role of human involvement in the XF-84H saga is paramount. Test pilots encountered an aircraft that posed both formidable flying difficulties and considerable physical strain. The deafening noise emitted by the XF-84H proved so intense that it triggered execration and headaches among the ground personnel posing a substantial threat to the well-being of all nearby during the operation. Lynn Hendricks, a test pilot, piloted prototype ship number two just once, 
thereafter adamantly refusing to fly it again due to reported instability at speeds surpassing 450 knots. To address the noise pollution challenges, engineers explored various measures. One approach was optimizing propeller design to reduce noise emissions. This involved adjusting propeller parameters such as pitch angle, cord length, and the number of blades. Research has shown that increasing the number of blades can lower noise emissions, but this often comes at the cost of reduced propulsion efficiency. For the XF84H, the focus was on achieving high speed, and noise mitigation was a secondary concern reflecting the priorities of the era. The XF84H's propulsion system altered thrust via blade pitch adjustment. Due to its substantial diameter and rapid rotation, the propeller's outer two feet reached supersonic speeds. Shock waves generated by the propeller resulted in an overwhelming cacophony, a factor leading to the project's termination despite its awe-inspiring nature. The outcomes of these test flights were clear. The XF-84H was an unreliable and unsafe aircraft. Despite the ambition behind its design, the Thunder Screech failed to meet the expectations set for it. The mechanical and human factors that influenced its trajectory were too significant to overcome, leading to the program's cancellation in September 1956. The implications were far-reaching, as the XF-84H's failure highlighted the limitations of propeller-driven aircraft at the edge of the sound barrier and the importance of pilot safety in aircraft design. However, the project was beset by setbacks. The Thunder Screech was plagued by mechanical issues, including engine reliability problems and aerodynamic deficiencies that led to frequent emergency landings during test flights. The noise generated by its supersonic propeller was so intense that it became a physical hazard, earning the aircraft its notorious nickname. In retrospect, the XF-84H's conceptual genesis was a bold step forward in aviation. It was an attempt to stretch the known boundaries of speed and power in propeller-driven aircraft. Although it did not succeed in its intended purpose, the XF-84H remains a significant chapter in the story of aviation, a testament to the relentless pursuit of progress and the lessons learned when pushing the frontiers of technology. That brings us to the end of this video. If you want to see more videos like this, click on one of the cards on the screen.